there and welcome to another Watercolour Wednesday. I'm going to be using my Mission Gold Watercolours and some Bao Hong Academy Watercolour paper. The pad is approximately an A5 size and it is 100% cotton. This is an actual watercolour block so it's gummed on all four sides and there's just a little bit that's not glued at the top that you can put a pen or a palette knife or something into to loosen up and separate the pages. I'm also using my black velvet, silver black velvet paint brushes. So I deleted the rest of that video because I have finished the painting, which is of these sort of wildflowers, just random loose watercolour flowers that I was trying to do and trying to get the effect of them being loose and dancy in the wind. But I didn't like how they turned out and I thought I'll do the whole painting again, but I thought I'd show you my first attempt. And I like the colours that I've used. So I'm going to be using the same colours and I will continue. I feel like the size is all wrong. The stems, I like that long stem, but I don't like the very short stems. And I feel like the top one is too large and the whole thing just doesn't make the right picture. So without further ado, let's get a wiggle on. I'm using the silver black velvet brushes. I've tried to draw some sort of light pencil circles to kind of give myself a vague idea of where I'm drawing, uh, where I'm painting. I'm not sure if you can see them. I'm going to erase them even more though because once one puts watercolour on top of pencil, you can't get it off again. So I'm just using my kneadable eraser and I'm erasing as much as I can and still trying to be able to see the sizes. So I wanted a very pale colour and I'm starting with permanent yellow light and I'm just putting it on my palette and sort of working it into the brush and I want to water it down a bit. I'm trying to wipe the brush off on the side to water it down and I just want to try the colour out. It's still too dark so washing even more of the pigment off and now I've washed too much off. I've decided I'm going to actually rather add some water to palette there and now washing some more off and I think we've got the kind of pale pastel tone that I want. I don't know if it's a tone or it's not a shade. I get so confused with the actual art terms. So I'm going to try starting at the stem side and getting a petal and just trying my best. And I want to keep, I want to use the wet on wet technique so that I can drop colour in to change so that the colour blending will actually be on the paper and not in the palette. And I do want a loose and dancey sort of look to these flowers. And I must be honest, I struggle, but the reason I'm going over it a few times is just to try and keep these petals a little bit more wet so that when I add more paint, it will spread. So I'm just going over each of them again with more water just to make sure, even though it's actually raining outside, I'll, my paints always seem to dry out remarkably quickly. Now I'm going in with, it's called um, Quinacridone Permanent Rose. Just having a look on my, on my little chart that I painted all the colors. My swatch chart for a moment there. I couldn't think of the name of a swatch chart. And I want this mixture of paint to be a little bit thicker than the original, but not too thick because I really want this to 
dance off into the background color. So I love the magic of it spreading. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see. I just love watching the paint moving on the paper. To me, I find it actually, it's exciting. I get like a wiggle in my tummy of pure joy when I watch the paint moving. It's just so much fun for me. I think that's why I just love watercolors. I'm not a great artist. I never will be. But the joy it gives me is amazing. Now, I saw this little hint on a Skillshare class of using the base of your paintbrush to move some of the colors up. And I actually went out of that petal a little bit there. And it's just fun to watch the paint moving. Now I'm going to a darker color again, and this one is bright, clear violet. And I want that mixture to be very thick because I want this to be the base of this little flower. I want to bring it to a bit of a point. I'm going to try and go over my whoopsie daisy there. And find a space for my stem to come off. So I'm following the same kind of pattern of painting for the other four flowers. And I'd like this to be a really relaxing video where you can sit back and watch paint doing its thing and enjoy yourself. And I'm going to put some lovely music on by Epidemic Sound that you'll hopefully find relaxing. Here I'm using my very small paintbrush again just to move some colour around. I did, I, I just need to point out before I put the music on that I dried, I rinsed the paintbrush off and I dried it off so that it's damp so that I could just blend that in a little bit and allow it to move without having put, without putting too much water on there which would have created a bloom or a cauliflower. <laughs> okay, so enjoy the music and I hope you enjoy watching the video.
absolutely love that piece of music. I added the bird song on top myself from a recording I did many, many years ago when my husband and I were on holiday and we were visiting this amazing old museum and it was next to, it was one of those sort of places out in the country where they've recreated life as it was in the old days and it was next to a water mill and they had water running by and the birds were singing so beautifully and I did a sound recording of them just because they pleased my heart and I thought it was a really suitable piece of music because I can imagine these flowers blowing in the field out in the country somewhere with the birds singing along beside them. So I put the one flower there on its side and this one also slightly facing, not on its side, facing towards the side. And I decided to do this particular blooms um, pigment a little bit darker, a little bit more yellow, just to add interest and variety. And otherwise I'll be doing all exactly the same. I'm going to zoom out again so that you can see the whole picture because I think that we're starting to get to the bottom of the page and where I've got the zoom at present. So the colour that I'm using for these stems is called Van Dyke Green and I really love it. It's a dark sort of smoky green. It's a really one of my favourite green colours. And as you can see, I really struggle with doing stems and deciding where to place them. I wanted this impression of movement and <laughs> just battled a little bit with them and I suspect you had a giggle watching my hand wondering what on earth to do where should i paint now what should i do it's um it's not just you that struggles to sometimes paint and i think it's quite useful to see these indecisions and moments of minor panic taking place so this is just a little bud that I decided to add to kind of balance out the flowers. There are four flowers and one bud so that there's an uneven 
number of blooms so that one's eye doesn't get stuck. This is something I've learned that one should always aim for an uneven number of something. Apparently, if you have an even number, the eye can't really come to rest because it tries to pair things. So with an uneven number, you can see the picture as a whole. I find that quite interesting. I'm now using a dip pen instead of the back of my brush to try and draw some fine lines out with this. There's, I didn't I didn't dip the pen in the paint or anything. I'm just pulling the damp paint down with it just to see how that worked. I love trying out new things. My dad used to call me Little Bits and my husband calls me Little Bits every now and then because I always like to, when I eat, have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And when I try things, I like to try a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which is probably why my channel is as it is is with a little bit of colouring, a little bit of watercolour painting, a little bit of glue booking. So now I'm adding some thin leaves and I'm not sure if I've done the right thing with them or not. I kind of wonder if I should have just left the stems. It's it's like something I had in my mind that I wanted to add these thin, wispy leaves that were also blowing around and going in different directions. But I'm not sure if it was the right idea or not. I did it though. So please let me know in the comments what you think. I'm still not happy with this, with this picture. I've actually done it four times altogether to try and get what I wanted. I like, I, it's the top flower I think that troubles me right now. And perhaps the leaves. I like the other three. I think the top one went out of the circle I'd drawn. And again, it's disproportionate to the to the others but it is what it is and this is not what I've done I think I'm over it I hope that you've enjoyed watching me paint this and I would so appreciate if you would leave a like for me in the comments uh, not in the comments underneath the video and you can see the two I do think this one that I did a little bit of a sketch is a bit better I should have shown you the other two I did as well, but I haven't. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye now.